Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek and also the Seek and Destroy show. Uh, sometimes I like to throw these Resident Evil episodes up on both channels so that people on my main channel can see that I do have a second channel, if you don't know that, and I cover a lot of Resident Evil stuff over there. And we've done like 60 or 70 plus episodes of Nemeseek on the second channel. So if you're watching on the main channel, Go check us out. We've covered a lot of the news for the upcoming live action movie. We covered a lot of the Resident Evil Village stuff. Um, obviously, Infinite Darkness we talked about. And the new upcoming live action Netflix series. We've talked a little bit about that as well and some of the casting that came out recently. So this is going to be a spoiler review, you know, full spoiler review of Infinite Darkness, which is on Netflix right now. Four episodes uh, in CGI. And uh, it stars Leon and Claire from the video game. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would say turn away now because this whole thing is going to be spoilers. And I'm going to jump all over the place. And I might not even cover a lot because I'll be honest with you, I did not enjoy watching this. Um, I don't think it was as bad as Vendetta, which is uh, I own the other Resident Evil CGI movies. I, I was gifted them in a box set. It's like all three of them. It's like Degeneration and uh, Ven uh, Vendetta was the third one. Um, and then I, I can't remember Damnation, I think, was the other one. And they're okay. Like I, I, the first two, Degeneration and Damnation, they're they're okay. Like there's enough in there to where I'm like, okay, there's some new characters, and I kind of you know that I like, especially in the se uh, second one, Damnation. I was like, okay, th I like some of this, but um, the the Vendetta one I really didn't like, and that sucked because it was Chris Redfield. Like I'm such a big Chris Redfield fan, and I did not like him in the in the movie. And then they, I was excited because they were bringing back Rebecca Chambers. But they just were, they brought her back as like a damsel and she's like, you know, some guy wants to marry her or something. It's it's really weird. I didn't like Vendetta. It ends with just another tyrant type monster. It's very boring and by the books and not imaginative and not creative. These CGI movies, all four of them star Leon. All four of them. There are other characters in the Resident Evil universe, but yet all four of these star Leon. And I'll be honest with you, in this story... You can actually take Leon out of this story, and in my opinion, doesn't change the story at all. Um, you could have already told a story about uh, a special unit squad called the Mad Dogs in a country uh, panipstan or something like that. At the beginning of the movie, they start off, and they're it's like Black Hawk Down. One of their helicopters goes down, and they break formation to go after and try to rescue them. And in doing so, they see zombies, and then the you know government has to bomb that area to keep that quiet um, but the mad dogs all get infected and they have to take a, a serum every like day in order to uh to stay human and prevent mutation and over time the six members of mad dog uh, squad that survived over the course of the six years between the opening of this uh animated movie up till 2005 or 6 when the the, the main story takes place in that six years five of those six members committed suicide um which is tragic, because and what I also appreciated in this was that that's very the zombie part. Take that out of it, but soldiers coming back with PTSD and struggling and trying to re um, insert themselves into society again. It's, it's it's hard for soldiers sometimes, and so to kind of shine a light on that a little bit, I found that the most interesting and human part of these four episodes. So much so that I wanted the whole story to focus on Mad Dog Squad and Jason, their leader, and Shen Mei, who shows up like a fifth class soldier at first, and then she like, um, you know, starts working with Jason to expose what really happened in this other country because it's like Raccoon City. Raccoon City had an outbreak, and the and that was kind of covered up, but still some rumors came out about what happened there, and there's been rumors of zombies and monsters, but no one's really seen them over in this country no rumors spread nothing there was a couple survivors uh one little boy who's mute but he can't really tell anyone what he saw because he's mute uh, but he drew a picture of it and that's what sends claire redfield on an investigation to see if there were zombies in that country before it got bombed six years ago and so that's kind of the, th the thrust of the story so to me claire in a way serves a purpose you probably kill uh, you know still could have switched her out with anyone else you could have made up a new character who worked for Terra save or anything like that um but if you wanted to use claire she at least served a little bit more of a purpose in that regard but as she's solving the mystery they're revealing the mystery in the main story so you have the main story with jason and leon and shen Mei and patrick working for the president uh, as a zombie outbreak happens in the white house and then they take down the zombies and this was like a day after the white house computers were hacked so basically this guy named Wilson, who is a advisor to the president, 
is trying to get the president to start a war with China. So he's the one who caused the hack. He's the one who caused the zombies. And you know that from like the moment the, the anime starts or the animated show starts. You know it that Wilson's the bad guy. Because you even see him in the opening scene. Uh, he's, uh, he's the general that sends Mad Dog Squad who tells them not to go back for the other helicopter because they knew they were going to bomb that area. They bomb the area, but Mad Dog actually got out with uh, with Shen Mei's little brother, uh, Junsi. And so they s escape with someone, but Junsi is infected and he's already mutated. So Shen Mei basically takes, you know, they smuggle her brother out because her father has connections in China and they're able to smuggle her brother out and just declare him dead so they never found the body. And uh, and then his her brother is like on life support, but mutating into like a monster in China for the last six years. So her motivation is she wants to get revenge on Wilson and the, the government people that scream in the you know president's ear to start a war. She wants to stop them and get revenge on them. And so again, human and realistic. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, as much as everyone wants to like crap on presidents for being bad or good, you know, or they praise them when they're good and crap on them when they're bad. Uh, they're just a lot of times patsies to um, a room full of idiots who um, just want to stay rich. And they'll s scream at the president to make decisions that'll make sure that they stay rich. That's basically it. That's what that's what advisors and politicians are. They just scream until, um, and so they can stay rich. That's, that's all they care about. They don't care about you or me or anyone. Uh, so I kind of like that this movie, in a way, addressed that, but also addressed real things like PTSD and, and soldiers coming back from war and what it's like for them, but then adding the Resident Evil element of making it about zombies and, and things like that. All that is the stuff I liked in this story. Everything else is so awful. Uh, once they brought in Leon, awful. This is probably the worst interpretation of Leon that I've seen. He just comes in, of course, you know, it's like Resident Evil 4 kind of, like he's hitting on every woman he meets, asking them to go to dinner with him. So he's kind of a pig like that. Um, his one-liners are awful. He shoots a couple zombies in the White House who are clearly White House people that got infected. Some of them are secretaries and things like that. He shoots them like with ninja skills. He's like, psh, psh, psh. it's like so boring to watch him fight zombies because there's no horror to it at all. He's like a kung fu master well, like a, with gun fu. And he's like, psh, psh, like Devil May Cry Dante. And you're just like, what? It's so boring. And then after he kills him, he just goes, He's like, yeah, drop dead assholes. And you're like, that little, that young lady was probably making copies for somebody and then she got infected and you just called her an asshole. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know. Like, there's, So there's no humanity to Leon, anything like that. Um, in the end, he makes a decision where he decides to protect the cover-up a little bit uh, and not expose it fully because he's afraid of what the villain says to him at the end is, you know, because the villain at the end is Jason. It's the guy from Mad Dogs, the, the one survivor. Turns out, you know, after watching his men die and everything, you know, commit suicide one by one uh, and having to live off life support on these serums for the last six years, he's tired of it. He wants the world to know that zombies are real and monsters are real. So he stops taking his medicine so he can mutate. And in the process, though, he's like killing, you know, uh, Navy men like they go on a submarine and they're going out into international waters sent by Wilson, the bad guy of the story. And he wants to cause an international incident. So he he sends Shen Mei and Jason knowing that they're going to sabotage the mission, blow up the submarine, and then that way they can say that a Chinese missile hit it and it'll cause a war, you know, and that all those soldiers died, um, f you know, to start a war. And Leon literally has the evidence in his hand that will prove that that was not the case, uh, you know, and that those men who died in the submarine can get some justice knowing that uh, that the people that killed them are gone and yes wilson does get exposed but there's still some secrets like monsters existing that would that would further expand what really happened to the men on that submarine the men and women that were on that submarine uh but really what happened was that they were killed by jason and shen mei who cut their throats and then released like a, a bioweapon down there of like blood rats that like crawled in and out of people which was pretty awesome it was a cool scene but it was still like like, why would they release that virus with them on the, the in the submarine with it? It just, I don't know. So it it just got to a point where Jason and Shen Mei 
you just don't like them by the end. They, they just become the villains, like straight up. Like Shenmei does decide to team up with Leon after her her the remains of her brother get killed, um, which they blame on uh, Jason, but yet we don't really know if it was Jason. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of evidence that points to it, but it's just Leon goes, Jason did this. And he goes, see, he tried to kill you, your brother, your, your grandpa. Um, and he's like, he did kill your grandpa and your brother, so help me go stop him. And But that's supposed to make us feel good for Shenmei like she literally cut the throats of all these innocent navy guys and gals that like work on on that submarine she helped kill them if she would have struggled and said I can't do it I can't cut their throats and Jason had to do it himself um that would be one thing because then you could have one person with the perspective that they turned evil and then you could have one person battling it you know in, in Shenmei and she could be like I, I can't I can't go that far because these people have brothers too and sisters and children and I can't, I don't want to take them away. Like the same way I don't, the, what happened to my brother? Like I don't want to become the monster. But she does. And so at the end, you're just like, well, I hope she dies. And then she dies like in a blip. And you're like, oh, okay. So that's, that story wrapped up really quickly. Um, this story is, it is bad. And like I said, if you pluck Leon out of this um, with his like, I don't know, like 40 lines of dialogue, maybe like he doesn't talk that much. And when he does, he says shithead things. And uh, I just, or arrogant things, or, um, I don't know, he's, he's just, they, it's, I don't know, it's like someone who wrote him, they were like, I want to make him like Steven Seagal from the 90s, and give him all these like dumb one-liners and stuff, and I'm like, uh, like, yes, that's kind of an interpretation of him for Resident Evil 4, uh, but I don't, I personally don't like that about Leon, I don't like that version, I like the Resident Evil 2 version, where he's like this rookie cop, naive, wants to do the right thing, and he's in over his head and, he, and there's a struggle and you know and he's trying to get out of the city and, and save claire and then sherry and and uh, ada too at one point he tries to have a heart uh you know and and now no nothing nothing like that he's just he's just action guy and he's so boring he's super boring in this um and like i said claire is trying to solve the case but as she, her story is going in this direction where she's getting answers you're getting the answers through jason and leon and patrick and uh, and shen may in the a story so it almost defeats her B story. Like, why are you adding a, a mystery to this when the answers are just being farted out in each episode by the, the main story people? It's bad. The, the one interesting thing that they're putting in there gets gets lost in, uh, well, we got to put this in there because it's Resident Evil and we got to do this and we got to have something in there for the fans. And we got to have, the, and at the end, we got to have Leon and Claire like have some tension between them where Leon decides to not expose the full story and Claire wants to. And then they have, they part almost like not friends anymore and it's like but who gives a shit <laughs> like who gives a shit uh you know uh, of that like that could have been way more dramatic and done way better if that was what you the, the point of your story was was to separate these two from being friends um but you know like this is not going to have any real repercussions to the games or probably anything else in the universe even if they make another cgi movie they probably just won't put claire in it they'll probably put ada in it again um or chris or someone else or barry and they won't even touch on like that thread probably or if they do if they bring it up they'll get over it really quickly and they'll half-ass it and that's what this feels like I felt like everyone half-assing it um voice acting wise not great um uh, story wise not great uh visuals and directing not great and to me, I would have just taken this in a, and told a completely new story. Um, you know, even the title Infinite Darkness is, is a lame title. Um, I would have just told the story of Jason and Shen Mei and maybe Patrick. He's the other member of, of their team, kind of. And Jun Si. Like, I would have just focused on that. Like, why, why not? Like, why, why not give a fan something a little different, new characters to kind of get invested in? And also put old school fans on a same on the same page as new fans that could have been neat in one of these to finally see like hey all you guys you know who chris and jill and leon and all those people are well we're gonna you know we're gonna tell a story with new characters so that way you know and maybe do a cameo of leon like put him in a scene or put like a claire in a scene or chris or the bsaa do something like that like res evil 7 does <laughs> you know like res evil 7 just kind of threw chris in at the end do something like that so that way we're invested in these new characters because it worked out with with Ethan pretty well. I mean, not everyone loves Ethan. I, I think he's kind of a bland character, but he carried those two games, seven and eight, uh, with Mia and stuff. So try something different. Uh, definitely change the animation style. Please don't do CGI anymore, Capcom. 
Um, this, like I said, I had a theory that this was going to feel like a, a fourth CGI movie that they just cut into four episodes, and that's exactly what this is. Um, those CGI movies probably just don't sell enough or sell that well, and they thought, hey, we can get mass distribution through Netflix. We're doing the live action show with them. Let's squeeze this into the deal, and let's get this out there. And good move, good business move, but then on, if you're going to do that, though, then why do you need the safety net of Leon and Claire to thrust the story? You don't. If you're gonna put, if you're gonna make something for Netflix to bring in new Resident Evil fans, like they're gonna try to do with this live action show, I don't know if it's gonna go that well, but it might. They might bring in some new fans. Um, but this, like, it, this could have been a, a, an opportunity to do that too. They could have been like, hey, let's get a different animation style than the CGI. Let's either do actual anime or do something like, you know, something else. Like, come up with a different style. Like, uh, the new Night of the Animated Dead movie that's coming out. Do something like that. You know, uh, do something super stylized. You know, whatever. Like, they could have done something, anything, if they actually made this for Netflix. I don't think they did. They clearly made it to be a DVD, and then they decided to just put it on Netflix as four episodes. Lazy, in my opinion. Uh, to me, like, the safety net of the DVD sales, like, you want Leon and Claire in there because you're hoping Leon and Claire fans will buy the DVDs and that's your safety net. So even if the movie's not great, it had those two characters. So they got a, a chapter of their story. Putting on a Netflix, most people have Netflix. So this is a great opportunity to do something a little different. Not, not so far different like the live action show's going, but still tell a story set in this universe. You could have done a Billy Cohen story and bring in a bunch of new, whatever happened to Billy Cohen after Resident Evil Zero? You could do that in one of these movies. Uh, what about the origin of Krauser? What about the actual fall of Umbrella? Like, you could do a lot of things that actually matter to the universe of Resident Evil, um, or, you know, uh, do something kind of different but still set in that world. Um, you could have taken the story of uh, Outbreak, the video game, with all those characters. You could have made that a series. Could have made like six episodes or even four episodes and focus on the characters from Outbreak since, you know, Outbreak is in canon, but it's probably never going to get translated again in any other format. You could have made an Outbreak show and focus on all the characters from Outbreak and tell their stories, you know. You could have done anything, anything else but this. Um, like you had a good start with Jason and Shen Mei, and I think you were on the right path, but then you just had to throw in all this other stuff that didn't need to be here. Um mentioning tricell you know which is something only fans are going to care about and even me as a hardcore fan i don't give a shit that tricell is part of this story i don't give a shit at all uh that this sets up resident evil 5 in that way who cares it, it, it doesn't change my viewpoint on resident evil. it's not like i got there and was like oh wow resident evil 5 that just man that makes me look at that game in a whole new way doesn't at all like it doesn't it, it was worthless um leon in this story worthless uh claire borderline worthless at the end she just becomes a damsel like rebecca in the last movie um and these are characters that survived raccoon city and you just turned rebecca and claire now into just damsels at the end of it i'm like it's bad it, it's bad and uh and I'm, I'm not a fan of it uh so let me know what your thoughts are if you have the same opinion or different opinion let me know down below but i'm just so bummed that we have this show that is this bad in my opinion. In my opinion, there are people out there who probably like it. And then I have hesitations about the new show. I'll still watch the live action show, but I'm a little nervous because it doesn't feel like a Wesker story. And that doesn't mean the acting, the actors that are cast per se, it just means the story they're telling just doesn't sound like a Wesker story. Like he's a dad with two girls, like that he, and he's like there, he cares about them, I guess, to some degree. And, and, uh, and his secrets like bleed into the adventures they go on into the future in the future storyline it's like that just doesn't sound that good that sounds as bad as the the resident evil stuff that's in this um so i don't know I, i'm it sucks because resident evil village was a fun game i liked it and reverse i had fun playing that the, the multiplayer online one which i don't think is out yet they need to release that thing already um but I, I liked Village and stuff, and I thought Resident Evil was moving in a better direction with the Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 Village. Uh, not Resident Evil 3 remake. I thought that was a misstep, in my opinion. This feels like a misstep, and uh, the live-action show, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I feel like it could be a misstep. And that sucks, because I'm a hardcore Resident Evil fan, and I was so happy to have a live-action show, an animated show, uh, video games, a live action movie coming out. Like I was just like, man, it's paradise. I'm surrounded by Resident Evil. And even if I don't like one of them, I'm probably going to like all the other ones. 
and the list of things I like on uh, that of that list, just crossing them off, and it sucks so bad. Um, but if you feel differently, let me know down below. And if you feel the same, let me know down below, and we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching my long rant about this. Uh, you know, and if you have any other comments, any other shows you want to see me uh, review, I still have uh, Tresse episodes five and six. I still got to put that review up on this main channel. Um, and if you're watching on my Resident Evil channel, I do have other stuff on my main channel if you want to go check that stuff out too. So thank you so much. I will see you all in the future. Peace.